Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome once again. It's a great pleasure to see you guys. Um, I want to take time out to say, Bavon, thank you so much for your faithfulness and for joining me every Sunday. And the rest of you guys, you already know, I appreciate you guys. And without you guys, I wouldn't be able to do this. You know, God is doing something great with this. And even though it looks small now, this is going to uh, become something great. The Lord say, don't despise small beginnings. So you all are chosen to be a part of this great uh, project that God is creating. So um, I just thank God for your faithfulness and joining me every Sunday to give me the opportunity uh, for God to use me in your life. And I really do hope that you are getting something out of the Bible study. I do. I think about that all the time and say, Lord, I hope that something that I'm saying is changing their lives, you know, or was affecting their life or is helping them. And I mean that from my heart. And I love you guys. I do this. Um, I, I don't do this to be seen. I do this uh, because I know this is what God want me to do, first of all. But I also do it because I want it to help you and change your life like God changed my life. And I want to do it to encourage you and strengthen you in the Lord, like God encouraged and strengthened me. Now, I'm the first partaker of the word. So when I come here on Sunday and I've read that this is for me too, because I'm the first partaker. I know some ministers, they's like, Lord, give me something for the people. I say, no, Lord, give me something for us, okay? Because I need this word as well. I don't, um, I'm not the preacher that preach at you. I'm the preacher that says, you know what? This is for all of us. We're all in this together and we need God to bless our lives. So I'm right there, wherever you are, you know, wherever you've been in your life, trust me, I probably done been there too. So I do this because I know that God is real and I know that, um, that God, how, how would I say? I know that God loves us unconditionally and I know that, God want us to serve him with a pure heart and he'll give us the equipment to do it. We're not alone. We're not alone in this. God is with us every step of the way. Since my spiritual walk, no matter what I went through, God was always there holding my hand. And whether I was falling short or whether I was rising high in him, he's always there with me. Amen. I'm going to open up in prayer. Father God, thank you so much, God. You are so awesome and there is none like you. Who is man that you would be so mindful of us, God? God, I thank you for being in our midst today, God. You say we're two or three are gathered in your name. You're in the midst. Welcome, Holy Spirit, God. We welcome you today in our midst. Thank you for who you are, God. God, let your living water flow, God. We need a word from you, God. We need a word to keep us, to sustain us, God. We need a word so that we can serve you with the right heart, Father God. God, this is not about man, God. This is all about you. Have your way in this place, God. Move my natural mind out the way and let the spiritual mind take over, God, and speak what thus saith the Lord, God. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. So, I put the uh, the scriptures up there. I think T have them up there. And the title of my message, look, I don't forgot my own title. <laughs> the title of the message is Run Your Sp I, I had spiritual, but Run Your Spiritual Race with Endurance. And the Lord really broke this down because this race is not easy. I know some people, they get, I even did it too. You get saved and you say, oh, that's it. I, I, I accepted the Lord as my Lord and Savior and I'm good. No, <laughs> that's the wrong answer. You're not. <laughs> because now you have to run this spiritual race until the Lord take us home. Amen. Or until the Lord comes back, whichever comes first. And the race is not easy. I don't want to sit here and tell you that you're good now because you're saved. Yeah, you're good now because you're going to heaven because with your heart, you confess your sins and you believe that the Father God died on the cross for you. And yes, 
But the moment you did that, Satan was standing right there, ready to steal your salvation. And yes, he can't, excuse me one minute. <laughs> and yes, he can steal your salvation um, because he's going to come to tempt you. He's going to come to discourage you. He's going to come to get you off track. That's his job. The Bible say the thief, that's the devil. He come to steal, kill, and destroy. I believe that word with all my heart. I don't think that, oh, that's just the devil. No, that devil, I'm not glorifying him because he has no power. I glorify God and all power go almighty God. He owns power. He created power. But um, the reason I'm talking about him today, because I want you to be aware of his deceitfulness and his tactics and his tricks, tricks, because he's very, very cunning and very deceitful. So you always got to have on your spiritual armor to fight against this enemy. So many Christians, they fold or they fall back or they get fearful, you know, and you got to put your boxing gloves on with this devil. This devil hates me because he knows that I'm a fighter, that no matter how many times he knocked me down, I get back up and I stay firm in the race. And that's what God wants us to do. And how do we stay firm in this race? By reading the word of God. You got to say in this, the, the instructions is in here. I wouldn't still be in this race if I stopped reading this. I would have backslid folded because now I'm I'm walking in the flush and I'm I'm doing what my natural mind tell me to do versus what the spiritual mind tell me to do. So when I go through something I I I go in here. I don't care what I'm going through. And I found that God always has the answer. I go right in here I say God, I'm going through this. I talk to God and I want you to talk to God like God is your friend. Don't make up nothing. <laughs> Don't try to figure out what the, you know, make up a prayer to impress God. Uh, God ain't impressed. <laughs> Trust me. And I see, and I'm not talking about uh, other ministers, but I notice when they pray, they pray all these words to be heard. And you guys notice when I pray, I pray with the spirit, say pray. It don't have to be long. Sometimes it's short, sometimes it's long. But I'm I'm led by the spirit. I'm not making up stuff, you know. The Lord would tell me what to pray for. And just like when I go to God, I just go to him face to face. I'm our, our, our oh my goodness. I go to him face to face and I say, Lord, I'm going through this, you know, and I need the answer for it. Like God want to be your friend. God want to be your closest companion. You know, God is not so high up that he can't come down to where we are. God will meet you. I promise you, wherever you are, God is right there, you know. And the enemy, that's the biggest trick. He don't want us to believe that God is always with us. And especially if you're going through some problems, that devil coming right away. Mm -hmm. Where's God now? Why God letting that happen? Why are you going through that? Mm, see, I told you, but I promise you, God is faithful. His word says he's faithful, and I believe his word. God is faithful. He will never leave us nor forsake us. I don't care what happened in our life. God is concerned about it, and God is always there for us. Amen. So I'm going to get started with his word, and I'm starting with the first scripture, Hebrews 12, and I'm going to read um, from verses 1 to 11. Therefore, this is the key scripture. Therefore, since we are surrounded by great a cloud of witnesses. Now, the, the cloud of witnesses is the prophets from uh, the, the disciples and those that have gone on. You know, they were witnesses to that Christ is real, you know, and they are witnesses because they're in this Bible and they wrote the Bible. And so they are witnesses that God is real who by faith have testified to the truth of God's absolute. And I'm reading out of the um, uh, the Amplified Bible because I, I really want this scripture broken down. Absolute faithfulness, stripping off every unnecessary weight 
you know what unnecessary weight is? That sin that that uh that you've been delivered from, or the sin that you were struggling with a long time ago when you got saved, and every now and then you go back and tap in that thing and pick it back up. It's a weight, it weighs you down. Let it go. The Lord say, Let that that's that's a heavy weight. Because I'm gonna tell you, after you sin, and I don't know if nobody noticed it, I get great conviction. After you sin, you start feeling guilty. That sin weighed you down. Now you feeling all condemned. That's the that's that's what the way the devil wants you to feel. And you're feeling separated from God. And so that becomes a weight that you're carrying. And so the word of God said, get rid of that heavy weight, stripping off every unnecessary weight. And the sin was so easily and cleverly entangles us. Let us run with endurance. Amen. Let us run like we running for our lives because we are, your soul is at state here. And a lot of Christians don't realize that your soul is at stake. And yes, God loves us and God's full of mercy and God's full of grace. But at the end of the day, it is God's judgment call where we go. And so you want to do everything that you can to please God so that you can make it in. You know, you don't want to be unsure of your salvation. I'll sit here right now and say, if I die this minute, right now, I know without a shadow of a doubt that I'm going to heaven. I have no doubt about it because I've done everything that I can to serve God, to please God. I've done everything that I can not to sin against God. And I'm not sitting here saying I'm perfect because we all have sinned as the word of God said and, and says and fell short of his glory. But I know that I've done, at the end of the day, I've done everything that I can to please God. Even when I'm attacked and I'm hurt, I pray for the person. I, I, Lord, open their eyes to what's going on to, with them. I forgive them right away. And that's what God would have us to do. Because the greatest gift that I could ever get from God is showing other people love. And the word of God says that. The greatest gift that we receive is love. God wants us to walk in love. All these other gifts, he said, will pass away. But he said the gift of love will stand to the end of time. Amen. So that could be a sin too when somebody hurts you or, you know, and then you have the unforgiveness and then you keep dwelling on it or you keep a record of everything the person's done. God don't want us to do that. God want us to forgive and let it go, you know, and so we can be free because if we that will block us from uh, having that relationship with God, that God said, uh, let not, uh, your wrath, let not the sun go down on your wrath. So meaning when you're angry by the time sun, if you're angry in the morning, by the time the sun going down, you better have got rid of that. <laughs> Don't be waking up tomorrow talking about, Oh, this, that, that. And that's kind of hard. And that's something we all got to work on is it depends on how deep we've been cut, you know? how deep that wound is, you know, and God, all he asks is that we work on that. And that's what, you know, I'm in the midst of just working. That's why he allowed things like that to happen to give you practice so that you can work on forgiving others. Amen. Cause you'll ask God, why does this keep happening to me? Why people keep hurting me? Well, you in training and you got to have that practice. How will you know to forgive if you never have to forgive, you know? How will you know to pray for somebody that hurt you if you never had to do that? So it's all for our own benefit. Amen. So it said, and the sin was so easily cleverly entangles us. Let us run with endurance and active persistence, the race that is set before us, looking away from all that will distract us. You hear that? Because the enemy sends distractions. So we need to stay focused on our spiritual walk. No matter what that devil throw our way, uh-uh, devil, I'm staying focused on what thus saith the Lord. And that's why you got to get this word in you and be full, filled with the word of God because the word of God say faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You can't build your faith if you're not reading his word every day. So you got to read this word every day 
so that your faith can be built up in God. And that way, when trouble come, you have that scripture to throw at the devil. Scripture is not, some people use scripture to, to, uh, to beat people up with, like they God, they throwing it at them. They sitting up in the judgment seat. Mm -mm. Scripture, is, uh, first of all, is to comfort people and to help them and to strengthen them and to give them wisdom. It's never supposed to be used to condemn someone or used as a weapon. Amen. No, you, God don't want us doing that. So active and persistent, the race that is set before us, looking away from all that will distract us and focusing our eyes on Jesus, who is the author and perfecter of our faith. And in some Bibles it says, you might have read it, who is the author and finisher of our faith. Amen. He started this and he will finish it. Amen. If you just hang in there with him, if you just hold on to his unchanging hand, if you just don't let the devil make you slide back. Amen. And sometimes it get hard. Things come in our lives to discourage us. People break our hearts. We get sickness in our body. Sometimes, you know, you're suffering from an illness for, year, for years and years and years. And sometimes you're going to be in the same season. I'm coming to strengthen you today to let you know that no matter what go on in your life, God is not going to leave you. So don't let go of his hand. It's going to be some season you'll go through something for years and years and years, you know? And I don't always like to bring this up, my singleness, but it seems to be a great example. And that might be God's point. <laughs> So, for instance, the temptation that I've had to endure for 23 years of staying single and staying in his will and denying the temptations, because they do come my way, trust me, you know. And sometimes I get so tired and I be like, Lord, can I get married so folks can leave me alone thinking that <laughs> I'm available, you know. And then I know that it's not God that's sending them because you have discernment and you know but the temptation is still there and you can get weary and well doing in a situation like that or the pain that I've had in my body since 2009. Like it's 24 hour pain. People don't realize because that's a disability that you can't see. And people don't realize from the time you wake up in the morning, I mean, go to sleep at night and wake up in the morning, you are in all this pain. But yet you say, Lord, I know one day you're going to heal me. I hold on to my faith. I say, I'm healed by your stripes, Lord. I know one day that this pain will leave my body. And I believe that with all my heart. I don't care how long this pain has been there. I know that God is, I could wake up one day and heal just like that. He'll do it like that. We serve a suddenly God. God do things suddenly. Amen. Hallelujah, and receive and believe that for whoever that word was for, that if God hasn't done it yet, he will do it. Everything we need, God has it. He is our Jehovah Jireh. He's our provider. We don't have to stress over anything. We don't have to worry about anything because everything we need, God can, can provide for us. I promise you that. So if you're having that relation, if you're in a relationship with God and you're believing that God got your back in every situation and every trial that God will help you get through that, then that'll keep you holding on to God's hand. You won't want to go backslide because ain't nothing back there anyway. But when you was back there, you who did you have to look to? Because the devil ain't your friend. You couldn't go to the devil and say, yeah, devil, can you help me out of this? The same situation you got me in? No. The devil is not our friend, and we're not going to go back to him and serving him. We're going to run this race with endurance, no matter what come in our lives. And I'm speaking to myself, too, as well. No matter what we go through, we're going to believe God to bring us through and to the end. We're going to see this to the end. Amen. Hallelujah. Because there's nothing in this world that's worth our salvation. Nothing at all. You don't want to get to the end of life and not be sure. You know, my stepdad, he he got to the end of life and he was not sure. And he had my mom call me from work. And when I got there, I looked at him and he said to me, he was like, um, 
He said, I'm not scared of death, but I'm scared of going to hell. He said the right words. I was just so like blown when he said it, you know, because of the person that he was and the life he lived. I never seen him afraid of anything, you know, the way he used to talk and everything. But right at that moment, he was concerned about his soul. And he said that to me. And I said, wow. I said, Lord, at that moment, I didn't know what to say. <clears throat> Excuse me. Because that's this man's soul at stake. <laughs> Who am I <laughs> that God would give me such a task? <laughs> I was like, I don't know what to say, Lord. So, you know, I waited. And the Bible said, be quick to listen, slow to speak. That means don't come from your own mind. Wait until the Holy Spirit tell you what to say. I know some ministers, they would have just went on. Oh, yeah, because Romans 10 and 9 says, no, I didn't go that route. I went straight from the heart, you know, and even though he had done heard that scripture before, but what he needed to hear that God is real, God loves you and God forgives you. God is full of mercy and God is full of grace. So I went that route. I didn't throw up much of scriptures at the man because I, I didn't see the need for that at that time. I let the Holy Spirit lead me. I said, well, what you need to do is you need to commune with God. Hear that word? Commune with God from here on out. From the rest of your time on this earth, you need to just talk to God and repent and tell God that you're sorry and can he have mercy and forgive you for your sins. And if you hurt anybody else, then guess what? You need to go repent to them too. You need to just get a clean slate with the Lord. And I believe that he did that because I was sitting at my mom's house and he was in the room and it was his last few hours. And I promise you, mm, this was so amazing. I saw the demons and the angels fighting for this man's soul. They were just in war because Satan had sent his angels because Satan thought he had a right to this man's soul because of the way he had lived his life. But Satan didn't have a right because this man had repented and asked God for mercy. And so once he did that, the angels came on the scene and started fighting for that soul. And I do believe with all my heart that that man made it into heaven. So you can't judge where somebody's going or any of that, because that's up to God. All we can do is pray for people and ask God to have mercy on their soul. But you want to be sure of your salvation and you want to be sure that you're running this race to please God. Amen. So uh, I'm on two, I think. Yeah. I'm going to start looking away from all that will distract us and focus our eyes on Jesus, who is the author and perfecter of our faith. Faith, The first incentive for our belief, one that will bring our faith to maturity. Hear that? It is God that perfects us and makes us mature, but you got to have an open heart to it. You got to be open to it. You can't have a hardened heart and you can't just be rebellious because some Christians just rebellious. They hear God. They know what God's saying, trying to act like they ain't hear God or they're twisted. They'll twist, the, they'll twist the scripture, too, to make it fit they nonsense. <laughs> I see them do that. I'm like, okay, if that's what you want to do. But that's not what I'm doing. Who, for the joy of accomplishing the goal, set before him, endured the cross, disregarding the shame. See how the Lord ran this race when he came down. And he showed us that it is possible. And no matter what the Lord went through when he walked this earth, and how they shamed him and how they lied on him and how they beat him. He still stand, stood firm for the purpose because he knew that the purpose of him coming here was to die for our sins. Had he not went to that cross um, and, and died for our sins, then we wouldn't have had a redeemer. When he died for our sins, he redeemed our soul from the hand of the enemy. Come on, somebody give him some praise for that. How glorious is that? Lord, I thank you for dying for my sins. I think sometimes we take that lightly. Oh, yeah, he died for our sins. He went to, no. He was a man that came here. He was a man that got beat for our sins. He's a man that suffered. And he's telling us, I came to earth and I suffered. And I endured the shame and the pain. He said, I ain't asked you to suffer to uh, suffer as much as to death. I haven't asked you to suffer uh, where they're going to kill you 
or you're suffering for your life. No, you're suffering so God can change you. Suffering brings humbleness and obedience. I've seen people, they ain't, they real full of pride. If you don't suffer, you're going to be full of pride. I can almost guarantee you that. Because the more you go through, the more compassion you have for other people. Unless you let go on and let that turn you bitter. Now, some people, they have no idea of some of the things that I've went through, you know. And it was no point in running around complaining. The whole point of me going through was for God to use me and deliver me and to get closer with God. Everything that I went through in my life, it drew me close to God. So I'm glad for everything that happened in my life because it was all a part of the plan and the purpose. So when you're suffering or you're going through something, you got to take it. Don't get bitter about it and don't be like, oh, start complaining. Why I'm going to this? Why this happening to me? No, because God got a purpose for every single thing. I promise you, when I was out there in that world, what could go wrong went wrong. Every time I turn around, there was an eviction letter on the door. If you look up my name, you probably see like 50 addresses <laughs> for me getting evicted. They were taking the car left and right, bill, you know. And it was because I was struggling. I was a single parent. It wasn't like I wasn't paying my bills. It was like I didn't have enough money to match my bills, like my budget. And I'm serving God with all my heart. But I know God had a plan and a purpose for that. So now when somebody needs something, I have a given heart. I can't help but to give. And I'm going to tell you why. Because I've been in the place of suffering. I've been in the place of homeless, you know, being homeless. And so if somebody homeless, I'm going to put myself on the line because I know how that feels to be in that situation. If somebody's hungry, I'm going to buy some groceries and I'm not bragging, but I'm trying to make the point of why God let us suffer so that we can help somebody else. The suffering is not about us. The suffering is so that we can have compassion for someone else, because I'm going to tell you, God want Christians with a love and compassionate heart. Even our spiritual walk is not about us. Our spiritual walk is about other people and how we treat other people. You know, when you get strengthened, go strengthen your brother and your sister. You know, if God has delivered you from something, some people are ashamed to say what God had delivered them from. And so when they see somebody struggling in that area, they don't say a thing. So you're going to leave your brother and sister hanging on a limb, huh? No, I don't do that. When I see uh, my brother or my sister struggling in an area, and I know that God delivered me from that, I say, you know what? I used to uh, struggle with that, and God is able, and God is going to deliver you. So allow God to use you in other people's lives. I believe that you guys are here because God have a purpose for your life, and God want to use you in other people's lives, and that's why he has you in this uh, training right now because the word that's coming forth the Lord is showing me is to prepare you for greater things. Amen. Give God some praise. So I'm down to three now. Just consider and meditate on him who adored from sin and such bitter hostility against him. Consider it all in comparison with your trial so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. See, it's like consider what Jesus went through and then you'll say what I'm going through on earth ain't nothing compared to what my father had to go through. And if God made it, I know I can make it because Father God is with me. You have not yet struggled to a point of shedding blood in your striving against sin. And you have forgot because God is with you. God is with you every step of the way. You don't have to struggle with sin. You have to pray about sin and God will deliver you. You don't have to struggle with it. You don't have to be in bondage to it because who the son set free is free indeed. Let God deliver you from sin. And how will God deliver you from sin? Boldly go to the throne of grace in the time of need and say, God, I'm struggling with this. Please take it away from me. Please deliver me. I promise you God will. God has delivered me from a whole lot of things just simply by going to his throne of grace and staying there on my knees and praying and telling God, take this away from me. And my famous prayer, my uh, favorite, I'm sorry, my favorite prayer is, um, I'm going to turn this phone off because it's... <laughs> What happened? I think somebody can't get in. I'm sorry. Uh, 
T. Is T there? Yes. Can you send a link to? I'll send it to Zaira, uh, and I think Cookie can't get in. That's the. They keep. Uh, what's your name? Okay. Um. You have Cookie's thing from last week. Right. Yeah. Someone text on the old chat too about it. Four four three. Yeah, that's Cookie. Yeah, oh. Cookie, and then Zaire. I don't. Do you have Zaire's number? No, I don't have her number. Oh, okay. I have oh, my sister. Yeah, I thought I sent Zaire the link. Let me see. Sorry, guys. <laughs> this is every Sunday, ain't it? <laughs> <laughs> we gonna get this right though. We gonna perfect this between <laughs> me and T. It's gonna get perfected. Trust me. <laughs> so I'm sending it to the four four three number and um. You want me to send it to, uh, I don't know, does she have, does she have our Shirley's phone? I don't know why Cookie didn't have it because I, uh, no, she, she got her own phone. Hold on a second. Oh. I'll, I'll send it to her. I'll send it to, um, Zaira, I think. Okay. And I'll send it to the 443 number. Okay. Thank okay. you. You're welcome. Is that cookie? Is that yeah, she's sorry. Hopefully, they'll get it. I'm sorry. So, I'm gonna drop down to three. Just consider meditating on him who, do, who endured from sinners such bitter hostility against him himself. Consider it all in comparison with your trials so that you will not grow weary and weary and lose heart. You have four says you have not yet struggled to the point of shedding blood and striving against sin. God is telling us is he's saying that it we make it hard when we're trying to not sin. But if our heart is in the right place, it won't be that hard because if we want to please God, then, you know, we're like, well, I'm not messing with that because that don't please God. It's easy as that. We got to get our heart in check. You know, sometimes we desire to do that sin more than we desire to please God. Come on, somebody, let's just tell the truth and shame the devil. At the point when that temptation come on you, you be like, God, that, God, that, what desire, you know. So we want to please this flesh sometimes. And it's the flesh that's worn against the spirit. And so when that uh, sin when that temptation come against you, you're designed to please, we sometimes desire to please the flesh more than the spirit. And we have to learn to have self-control and deny ourselves. Amen. So I'm going to drop down to five. And you have forgotten the divine word of encouragement, which is addressed to you as sons. So we are sons and daughters of Christ. My son, and you can put daughter there too. Do not make light of the discipline of the Lord and do not lose heart and give up when you are corrected by him. For the Lord disciplines and corrects those he loves and he punishes every son who he receives and welcomes in his heart. So when we uh, when we sin against God, trouble come. And that's that punishment. And that's God disciplining us. Because sometimes if you're in the will of God and trouble come, God will block it you know, or God will see you through that trouble and give you the strength. But if you brought that trouble on yourself by disobedience, sometimes God will let us suffer the consequence of that sin. And we do our own children that way. Amen. So I love it that God loved me enough to discipline me. You must submit to correction for the purpose of discipline. God is dealing with you as with sons for what his son did for what son is there whom the father does not discipline? Now, if you are an example from correction and what for, I'm sorry. Now, if you are exempt from correction and without discipline in which all of God's children share, then you are illegitimate children and not sons of God. So when he said illegitimate, that means that when you keep sinning, you're falling away from the family. You're no longer a Christian. And people say that once a Christian, always a Christian. But Christian means Christ-like. So if you are living your life in sin, then how are you Christ-like? That don't sound right to me. The Bible says you'll know them by their fruit. 
And so when you come, when you get around a Christian, you'll know that that person is a Christian. I was talking to uh, the general manager at my job on Friday, and he was talking about this pastor that was sleeping around. And I was just like, well, that was wrong. <laughs> pastor shouldn't be sleeping around. And in his mind, he didn't think that that was wrong because now you got a pastor that's not displaying the righteousness of God. And now you are stumbling block to this man. Not only are you accountable for your sin, she's accountable for his sin because he believes that that's okay. And the only reason he believes that is because she has shown him that that's okay. So as ministers of God, and I told him the truth, I said, no. I said, you cannot fornicate when you're a pastor. You should not be doing that. I say, it is wrong. And he was like, oh, wow. I said, yes, I'm telling you as another minister that that is a sin and that is wrong. So God had to send somebody back behind her to tell him the truth. And God's going to deal with her and, you know, her becoming a stumble block, stumbling block to somebody that's, you know, just not in the faith, you know. So moreover, we have our earthly fathers who discipline us and we submitted and respected them for training us. Then we listen to our parents, some of us. <laughs> Shall we not more willingly submit to the father? So he's saying if we had honor and respect for our parents and their wisdom, we took their wisdom into consideration when they disciplined us and when they told us something that you know was leading us in the right direction, then if we believe them, why can't we trust Father God? I see that point so big. Why can't we just trust the Lord? Shall we not much more willingly submit to the Father of spirits and live by learning from his discipline? For our earthly fathers disciplined us only for a short time as seemed best for them, but he, dis but he that's the Father, disciplines us for good and so that we may share his holiness. For the for the time being, no discipline brings joy. You know, like when you live in that life and you doing whatever you want to do and you thinking it's fun. I know when I was younger, I was just living it up. I couldn't wait till Friday came, got off work and go to the bar and have a good time and this and that. But I didn't know where that life was leading me. That life led me to uh, a bunch of disappointments and broken heartness and brokenness, brokenness. So that life do lead you down a path of destruction. It had me choosing the wrong people in my life, the people that came in my life to hurt me and the ones that Satan used to break me. And I know Satan was using them because Satan knew that God had a purpose for my life. So he was trying to destroy it before I got to this point in my life. Amen. So 11 says, for the time being, no discipline brings joy, but seems sad and painful yet for those who, who have been trained after by it. Afterward, it yells peaceful fruit of righteousness. Hold on a second. For the time being, no discipline brings joy, but seems sad and painful yet to those who have been trained by it. Afterward, it yells the peaceful fruit of righteousness, right standing with God in a lifestyle and attitude that seeks. Let me uh, beat this out the regular Bible because I don't like the way that's that's that uh, Amplified Bible, and I don't like the way is uh, is breaking that down. So you got to be careful what Bibles you read because sometimes it um sometimes when it breaks it down, it's just all over the place, and I I don't I want to I don't want to mislead when I read the scripture. I want to read it right. Give me one second. I'm gonna be there. Twelve, eleven. Now, no chastising seems to be joyful for the present, but painful nevertheless. Afterwards, it yells the peaceful fruit of righteousness to those who have been trained by it. So what that means is, yeah, chastising, it may seem painful and it may seem difficult, but at the end of it, it's for our own good and it brings peace in our lives. Say like, um, you're sinning and you're struggling with the sin of fornication and 
every time you turn around, you're getting your heart broke, especially for ladies more so. And you're getting your heart broke and you're falling in love with the wrong people and they pulling you down that uh that road of fornication and you just keep getting hurt. And God is allowing that hurt because he wants to discipline you up out of that. And if you get hurt enough, you're coming up out of that. I mean, I know I did. I was like, enough is enough. I've had enough of this. No more, dear God. I started praying and begging God to move folks out of my life. The same folks I thought I wanted. I said, Lord, please move them. <laughs> because I can't take uh, all this hurt that I'm going through. So disciplining, God discipline us, but it brings about righteousness and holiness and it brings peace. When you're walking in righteousness and holiness and you have peace in your life, amen. And the enemy don't like it when he see you living a peaceful life. Then he'll start sending unrighteous people in your life with chaos. Oh, you peaceful? Okay, well, I got something for you, but you still got to stand your ground and not be discouraged and know that no weapon formed against you going to prosper. You got to hold on to your peace, hold on to your joy at all costs. Amen. Because people living in the world, they don't have no peace. They don't have no joy. I can guarantee you that because the word of God said there's no peace for the wicked. And God is not a man that he could lie. It's in his word. Amen. So we want to run this race with discipline. What does discipline mean? To uh to punish, punish your own body, bring it into subject, subject, subjection to God, you know, make it obey the Holy Spirit. This flesh, you have control over your flesh. The enemy don't have control over your flesh. God has given us control over our flesh. Or it said, let me see. Oh, for the sake of enforcing obedience and perfecting moral character. So you have to work on your own character. Character. I see a lot of people, they worry about what other people don't know. I'm focused on myself and my character and me pleasing God. God didn't call us to judge anybody. That's why he said, judge not, at least you be judged. He said, with the, the same measure you're judging your brother and sister, I'm going to judge you. He said, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Amen. So work on yourself. You can't be worrying about other folks and what they doing. They doing this and they said this and that. No, all that is a distraction from the enemy and to bring division in the body of Christ. No, you're supposed to pray for your brothers and sisters. If you see the enemy got them falling short, then we need to pray for our brothers and sisters. And we must read our word daily because the instruction is in the word. I'm going to jump over here to Timothy, 2 Timothy 3, 16 to 17. Because Timothy gives us instructions on how to lead, live. He's saying that we got to read the word of God and we got to know that, um, that God is ordering our steps. We can't live on our own. Some Christians, you cannot live this life, this Christian walk with your own mind. You got to live with a spiritual mind. Last week, I talked about the carnal mind. You can't be led by the carnal mind. You got to be led by the spiritual mind. And how is the spiritual mind leading you? By reading this word. I know, you know, sometimes you struggle with stuff. I know I struggled a long time with cursing. I was a Christian. I was a minister cursing. I would get mad. i will be like, if you don't. <laughs> and the Lord had to work on me so hard with that. That was, that was my big struggle was cursing. I don't know. It would just come out my mouth <laughs> before I could catch it. I'm like, I didn't, and then I would feel bad about it. And I say, Lord, deliver me and work on me. But Peter, he cursed too. You know, Peter was God's disciple. And when they were looking for Jesus and the girl said, I saw that man right there with Jesus. And they came over <laughs> and they came over there and approached Peter and asked him, did he know Jesus? He said, if y'all don't get the F out my I don't know that D-A-M, man. The Bible said Peter just started cursing up a storm. But God still used Peter in a mighty way. And I'm sure Peter got delivered from that cursing. So I'm using that as an example. I'm laughing at my own self. I'm using that as an example. If you're struggling with any sin in your life, just let God work on it. Because 
all sin is not going to easily leave. In some sense, it's going to have to take a couple of years. It's going to be worked on. Because <laughs> I'm telling you, our ordained minister still cussing. I'll be there, and people would look like, Ain't you? Uh, yeah, child, I'm working on it. Amen. But you got to let God work on it. So 2 Timothy 3.16, all scripture is God breathed, given by divine inspiration and is profitable for instruction, for conviction of sin. Hear that? For conviction of sin. So you got to read the word to get convicted. There's no way around it. You got to crack this Bible open. Amen. For conviction of sin and correction of error and restoration to obedience. See, God will restore you, but he's going to do it through his word. For training in righteousness. If you want to be holy and righteous, you got to read this word. I read Proverbs all the time. And Proverbs have so much wisdom and correction in it. And I'm so amazed when I read Proverbs and how much wisdom is in that. So you can start off reading Proverbs because it has... Uh, it has instruction for everyday life. Anything that happens in life and you need an answer for it, go to Proverbs. Learning to live in conformity to God's will, both publicly and privately. You hear that? Because some Christians, they one way when they round the Christians and then they this way when they get around the world. No, God said a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. God wants you the same way Always, he want you to live Christ-like always. You can't be Christ-like when you with the Christians, you busting it up, you know, you speaking in tongues, you know, you holier than now, then you get around the world and then you like the world. No, uh-uh, that's, that's confusion. After a while, you're going to get confused. You're going to be like, oh, wait a minute, what am I? Who am I, you know? The devil will use that to confuse you because the devil is the author of confusion. Amen. So personal integrity and moral courage, right? Moral courage, standing for righteousness and holiness, no matter what. Trust me, you gonna get some. Uh, you gonna get some pushback on that when you stand firm for righteousness. Folks gonna come up against you. They gonna try to lie on you, but little you. Uh, attack your character, amen. And it's not the person, it's Satan. He want to attack your character. Oh, you think you're living for Jesus? I'm going to show you something. He likes to point out your flaws, you know? And that's why God don't want us judging anybody. He want us praying for each other because, you know, numbers is strength in numbers. As Christians, we need to be praying for each other because that devil don't like none of us. And so we need to have each other back at all times and not trying to fight against each other and this one jealous of this one. And it's so much division in the body of Christ. Amen. Even it's even division with all these nominations and different, you know, that's all a division. God say, no, we are all one body. There's one Lord, one baptism. So we're serving that same God. And it shouldn't be division. God wants us all to come together and strengthen each other. 17 says, so that the man of God may be complete, outfitted, and thoroughly, thoroughly equipped for every good work. I read that out of the Amplified Bible. And that was 2 Timothy um, 3.16, telling us that our instruction of how to live is in the uh in the word of God. And we have to suffer for righteousness. Suffering for righteousness means you got to stand for righteousness no matter what. When everybody else is going with the flow, you can't just go with the flow. No, this is it. This is the way this is. This is the way, you know, the Bible says, I'm not going along with that just because I don't want to hurt your feelings. No. Cuz at the end of the day, you're saving their soul when you're standing for the truth, you know? And you know when somebody's doing something wrong, you're like, no, that's only going to lead to um, problems. I wouldn't do that. And it's a way that you could tell the person. You don't have to act like you're beating them down with it or you're judging them. Because the first thing people want to say when you don't go along with them, oh, you judging me. No, I'm not judging you. I'm judging what you're doing. I'm not, I'm judging the sin. I'm not judging you per se. I'm judging that sin. 
Say like somebody's uh, committing adultery, they going with somebody else's husband. Uh, I wouldn't do that if I was you. I said, I don't see no good coming out of that. I don't see that man leaving his wife for you. You know, and that's the way I approach that. I'm not approaching it from a judgmental standpoint. I'm approaching it letting them know that that's only going to hurt you. Every time I talk to you, you're hurt, you know. And I just think that you need to step away from that situation because it's tearing you down. It's breaking you. So, you know, you got to tell them when you see something wrong out of love. You got to do it out of love because if you got a friend and you know that something is hurting them and what they're doing is leading down the road of destruction and you ignore it, I don't think that's pleasing to God because God say that we are to love one another and love your neighbor as you love yourself. And if you know that's going to hurt them very bad, you know, you try to just, you know, be a friend to them and try to let them know that, you know, that right there, that's going to hurt you real bad. So you might want to leave that alone. I'm going to get the scripture of the week before I forget. Psalms uh, 92, 1 to 15. Read it. Study it. Um, it's some good stuff in there. I've already read it and studied it. So endurance, I want to give you the biblical uh, definition of endurance, okay? The ability to withstand hardship or adversity, especially the ability to sustain a prolonged stressful effort or activity. Mm. When I said I had this pain in my body since 2009, but I'm still trusting God to heal me. This pain in my body, uh, it cut my career short. I had to go out on workers' comp in uh, 2009. You know, I, I, I herniated my disc real bad. I've been suffering from it. I take pain pills for it. And the pain pills, they have side effects, you know. That's why sometimes if I'm tripping over my word, that's some pills. That ain't me, y'all. <laughs> but I believe that God is going to deliver me and heal me I don't want to be on medicine. I want to be healed, you know? And so God has a purpose for allowing me to suffer with this pain so long. And I know he's going to get the glory out of it. So when you're going through something, if you just look at it as, like, if you just look at it and say, Lord, use it for your glory, I guarantee you it will be easier to endure because you got to have a heart to serve God and to serve him with his purpose in mind. You got to say, Lord, it is well with my soul. And trust me, it is times I've been in so much pain and I'm rolling on the floor and crying out to God. I said, Lord, I don't know how much longer, but I know you faithful. See, you got to speak words of faith to God. Amen. So the rest of uh, endurance, uh, um, the rest of the definition for endurance, it says that, the act or instance of enduring or suffering of many hardships. I know nobody want to hear that, but I did do it. I did do a Bible study on Job. So you remember when I talked about Job and all he went through. Amen. And Job said, after he has tried me, hallelujah, I shall come forth as pure gold. So nothing you do for God is lost. If you're faithful to God, he'll be faithful to you. If you endure hardships and suffering, and I don't care what it is, I know sometimes life is hard. Trust me, I know. You know, some people are, you know, when you're in a marriage and that person is acting up and you're like, Lord, have mercy, I can't take this. But, you know, now that I'm a mature Christian, I believe I could have took stuff that I couldn't take way back then. I believe that I could have prayed over my spouse. I believe I could have covered my spouse and I believe God, you know, was able. So once you become a mature Christian, you can endure more and you'll put on your whole arm and you'll begin to pray for that other person, you know? And some of us have been broken in our past. We're struggling with things that have been done to us in our past. Cause those, and let's just keep it real guys. Come on. Those painful memories still come back. And you want God to heal you and deliver you from those memories. I know I used to cry, cry, cry. And I say, Lord, when am I going to stop crying? But God had a purpose for my tears. 
to come to tell somebody if your heart's broken, God is a healer. God is close to the broken heart. But God don't, sometimes when we've been broken hearted, we like to cover that over and act like it's not there. We like to act like it didn't happen. But I come to tell you, if you do that, it's coming out in some other negative way. That's what the devil wants us to do. He wants us to hide stuff. Don't hide nothing from God. No, that's between you and God. And you ain't got to go to nobody and tell them what you're dealing with. But what you do need to do is go to the throne of grace and give it to God and say, God, I'm hurt. They did this to me. I am so hurt. I know in my younger years, I went through a lot of abuse uh, with my boyfriend at that time. And this dude used to pull a gun and be shooting at me and I'd be running down the street. I ain't even making this up, y'all. I'd be hardtailing and ducking bullets. I didn't even know you could duck bullets. But sometime, you know, and he did apologize in his defense later on. You know, he came to me and his kids with tears in his eyes and he said, please forgive me. And I think it took a real man to do that. And I did accept his apology and I did forgive him. But I'm using this story right now to let you know that sometimes those painful thoughts will come back to your mind, you know, that hurt. And when you start thinking about how a person treated you and you loved them so much, that hurt comes right back. It's like a wound opening back up. And that's what Satan want to do. He want to keep opening up old wounds because he want to discourage you. And he want to make you think that God don't care. Well, I come to tell you, Satan is a liar. God loves us unconditionally. God do care, but we have to give it to God. We got to be open with God. That's, that's that intimacy with God. You know, God, nobody can make you whole, but God. You know, we could be in a whole lot of relationships, but I'm going to say it like the old folks used to say, can't nobody do you like Jesus. So when you go to God in prayer, I promise you, and you say, Lord, please heal me from, you know, the things that I've been through. God got a purpose for allowing you to go through things. You got to look at it that way. God didn't allow that to happen just so you could be hurt. No, God's not sitting up there like, yeah. I wanted them to be hurt, so I let them go through. No, that's not the kind of God we serve. The devil is like that. God ain't. So whatever we went through, whatever painful situations we went through in life, let God use it for a purpose. Like I'm sitting here letting God use it right now. You can see how it's helping someone else, and that's God's whole purpose. But you got to let God use you later on after you get your healing. I can bring that up without crying because I'm healed from it, you know? There was a time where I couldn't bring that up. I know I was at the dinner table one time with my second husband and my mom and her husband. We was having dinner and something uh, that my boyfriend had did to me, it came rushing in my mind and I started crying and I just said it at the dinner, dinner table. I was like, he did this, he did that. And then uh, my husband at the time, he was like, come in. <laughs> Took me to the back, he said, Next time you tell that story, tell it to a psychiatrist, not at the dinner table. And I was like, but I think he was kind of cold for that one because what he should have said was, baby, and he was a, said he was a man of God, baby, God's going to heal you. Oh, no, he's going to get mad to tell that story to a psychiatrist. But what he didn't realize was, that, and I didn't realize at the time, there was a lot of hurt inside. But God is getting the glory out of it now. Amen. Come on, somebody give God some praise. Hallelujah. God is using it now to be glorified. What the devil meant for evil, God's getting the glory out of it. Amen. Hallelujah. So I know the devil mad about that. So I'm a close. I'm, a, I'm coming to a close. Can we go to Proverbs 3, 5 to 8? And I'm not going to hold you long. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he will direct your path. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. It will be health to your flesh and strength to your bones. Amen. I know that one by heart. That was my first, uh, that was my first scripture I used when I preached my first message as an evangelist. And that always stuck in my heart. And I believe God gave me that because he knew I was going to be enduring some things. And I preached that thing and I didn't know I was going to have to live it. Amen. Everything you preach, you're going to have to live. I'm going to go to uh, Psalms 37, 23 to 24, wrapping it up. Psalms 
The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delights in his way. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down, for the Lord upholds him with his right hand. You know how God going to uphold you? By you repenting and trusting and believing in him. By you getting back up after you done fell. And I'm going to show you over here in Proverbs 24, 16. Here we go here. Proverbs 24, 16 said, For a righteous man falls seven times and rise back up again. But the wicked shall fall in the calamity. Know what that means? A righteous man means your heart is in the right place. And even though you remember I say I kept cussing because <laughs> you know it had became a bad habit. But I still love God. That didn't mean I didn't love God, and that didn't mean I wasn't really trying, you know. And so a righteous man falls seven times, get back up. But I kept praying for myself and to God delivering me. Amen. So God wants your heart in the right place. And if your heart is in the right place, God can make you righteous because righteousness and holiness come from God. Can we go over to 10? It says, if you faint in the day of adversity, your strength is small. So you want to build your strength up in God. You want to build your strength up in the word. Amen. Hallelujah. My closing scripture is Matthew 15, 8 and 9. For some reason, I added this one. I didn't give it to T. Psalm 78. God gave me this at the last minute. So when I read it, please put it in your spirit. It was the last minute. He gave it to me. And I said, Lord, I'm going to um, give it to him. I couldn't shake it. So I knew that uh, this scripture was from the Lord. It's Psalm 78, 36, 39. Nevertheless, they flattered him with their mouth. And they lied to him with their tongue. This is wishy-washy, double-minded Christians. They say one thing and they do another. And 37 said, for their heart was not steadfast with him, nor were they faithful in his covenant. Amen. So God wants us to be faithful to him. God wants us to be serious about our spiritual walk. He kept giving me that one at the last minute. I said, Lord, I got to be obedient and give it to him. Matthew 15, 8 and 9. I'm closing it out. These people draw nigh to me with their mouth and honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. See, God know our heart and he know what's in our heart. When I read something like this, I get a little fearful for people that's taking advantage of God's grace and mercy and not coming to God. Because I don't care what state you're in, you can come to God. God can deliver you. God is a deliverer. You ain't got a shucking job. You got to want it, though. I tell people, you got to want it. You got to want it. And no matter how many times you fall, get back up and go to God and say, deliver me. And then one day you will be delivered. I promise you, who the sun set free is free indeed. But some people love sin more than God. And they don't realize that sin will kill you. Sin will kill you. Amen. I had somebody, I preached to him over and over. And I said, just get back up. Just keep praying. I mean, it was years and years I had labored and did this, but they kept choosing to go back to that sin. And eventually that sin killed them, you know, and that's what the devil want to do. He want to kill us. Sin will kill you. The Bible says that sin will kill you. We got to believe that we can't just be like, oh, no, no, sin will kill you. And now it says, and in vain, they worship me. That means they're not worship me with their heart. In vain, they worship me, teaching as doctrines the commandments of men, like tradition of men. You know, they go on through the motions, but not really with the truth. They have a form of godliness, but deny the power. You know, it's, it's too many Christians now just going with the flow or going with tradition. I don't go with tradition. I don't do things like other churches is doing. I I told my sister, I said, no, nah, I'm led by the Holy Spirit. I know when God was uh, raising me up as a Christian, I was sitting at his feet. I was not going to nobody's church because God told me not to. And I'm not saying that to y'all. This is the calling that he had on my life. He said, I don't want you to be influenced. I want to teach you direct. I want to teach you. I don't want you to be influenced because you're one of the people I'm raising up to come against Satan and all his tricks. And uh, I'm going to put you in the wilderness 
And I told my mom, I said, well, this is my calling and I got to listen to God and not man. You know, I, God don't want me distracted by all that. I know I ran into a bishop. I'm going to close it out. I ran into a bishop the other day and he was like, give me your number. I'll cover you. And I know some people would have jumped at that chance, but I don't jump at nothing. Okay. I jump at the voice of God and I put it before the Lord. I told him, we'll see. And I put it before the Lord and I said, Lord, if you want, if you sent that bishop to cover me and you're opening that door, God, then God, you speak to me and let me know. But I'm not moving without God. So you always want God to order your steps like I just read earlier because the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. I'm not trying to be seen or trying to be famous and this and that, because God, he opened doors that no man can shut. I'm patient, and patience is one of the fruits of the spirit. Don't be so anxious to run to nothing, because you don't know what door the devil is opening. That could be a door Satan is opening, you know? And so I said, no, I said, I'm going to wait on God and, and see what does say of the Lord. I'm not rushing to do anything. Just like when he called me to do this Zoom service. I was like, I got to wait. You know, he had told me to do it about uh, six months before I even started doing it. I was just waiting and waiting. And I said, well, Lord, if that's what you want me to do, then God, you will make it happen. And I know one day, T, you know, she was like, well, you want to do Bible study on Zoom? Because we were starting off with me, T, and a mom. And I said, okay, you know, and that was God's way of opening this door. See, God don't need no help opening the door. When God opened the door, it falls in place. So I'm telling you today that uh, if God has something for you to do, wait and let God order your steps. Wait and hear the voice of the Lord. And you'll know what's God when there's peace in it, like it's peace in this Zoom study every Sunday, except for them folks acting like they can't get in, but I'm just kidding. <laughs> so I hope you got something out of that today. Praise God. I know I did. It blessed my soul. You know, it gave me the strength to run on and I, Hope it gives you the strength to run on. And it amazes me how every Sunday God come with something. I promise you, this is not me. This is all glory and honor to God. I got to give God the glory. God give me this study every Sunday. And I'm blown when he gave it to me, you know. He's speaking to me. And I listen and I say, okay, Lord. I know somebody tried to tell me, oh, you should have a, you should have a study on this. And now I said, nope. I say, what I do is I wait and let God give it to me. I, I say, I don't do this on my own. I said, I wait and God gives me what the people need to hear. This is not about me. You know, when you begin to do that, then it's about you. You doing what you want to do. So I know that when God give it to me, y'all going to get blessed from it. Amen. Hallelujah. Because it's the Holy Spirit directing this. It's the Holy Spirit bringing the scriptures together. I promise you. When I'm studying for this and he'll speak this scripture and that scripture and I'll begin to write it down. I'm like, wow, that's coming together real good. But giving God the glory and the honor. So I get blessed from this service as well as I hope you guys are getting blessed. Thanks for coming again. I appreciate you guys. I really do. I love you guys. And um, I pray that you, I'm going to close out in prayer. But I pray that you have a blessed week. It started snowing. Just want to let you know, in case somebody don't know, <laughs> it started snowing already. And so be careful out there. If you have to go out there, just be careful, you know, because uh, everybody can't drive in the snow. <laughs> it might not even be you. It might be somebody don't know what they're doing, you know. So if you don't have to go out, don't go out. Don't put yourself at risk, you know, because that's not God want us to use godly wisdom. So I'm going to go ahead and close out. I hope I didn't hold you too long. I don't know. Yeah, a little bit over. I'm sorry. But I let God have his way. I love you guys. And I'm going to pray us out. And I'll see you guys next Sunday. And if you have any prayer requests, I bought a prayer book. And you put the person's name in it and the date. And then... You say the prayer, and then on the other side, they say the day the prayer was answered. So you got my number, 
If you got any special prayer requests, I promise you God going to answer these prayers. He led me to that book in the store. Text that prayer to me. I'm writing that down in my book. And when God answered that prayer, guess what? Hallelujah. It's going to be a testimony. That's how we keep up with uh, the prayers that God is answering in our lives, too. We need to remember the prayers that God answered. Google to a video. What happened? Hold on. Hello? I think he's trying to dial back in. I, I think that, that's Dean. He's trying to get back in, but I'm closing out anyway. So I'm going to close this out in prayer. It's been an exciting day with all these interruptions, hasn't it? <laughs> Somebody give God some praise anyway. <laughs> Hallelujah. Lord God, thank you for being in our midst today. Hallelujah. Thank you for that word that came forth, God. It was all you and none of me, God. I love the way you perfectly got that word out to your people, God. Lord, thank you for who you are, God. You are so, so, so amazing. So worthy to be praised, God. Bless your holy name, God. God, give us peace through the week and joy, unspeakable joy, God. God, order our steps like your word said, Father God. Keep us from all unseen harm and danger, God. Keep us in your word, Father God. Protect us. Let no weapon that is formed against us prosper, God. And God, I seal that word in our heart, God, that the enemy won't come and pluck it up, God. And let your word bear much fruit, Father God. Mature your people, Father God, that they will grow closer to you, that they will surrender, submit to your holiness, God. God, we serve a holy God and you desire holy people. God, make us holy, God. Wash us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Pull down every stronghold in our lives and destroy every yoke, God. Renew our minds, God. Hallelujah. That we can serve you with a righteous and a holy heart, God. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Have a blessed week. Be careful. Thanks for coming. Love you guys. <laughs>